Hey guys, it's Adogs, and welcome to my channel. So today, I just wanted to go over uh, the Collegia Stride that was uh, released in the new premium collection. So I do believe it's been out for a couple of months now. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but I just kind of wanted to go over and um, just really um, explain its usefulness in the four um, Greenwich decks that are available for premium at the moment and then after that kind of give Collegius an overall score um, overall. I will um, score Collegius in each deck individually as well uh, just so it gives you a bit of an insight of um, how Collegius fares in each deck. So the four main decks that you use Caladrius in um, well the four main decks that are used for premium Greenwich at the moment sorry is Big Belly, Isabel, Leopold and Hamske. So I'll get into the Hamske and Leopold a little bit later on um, as um, in case you guys may not know how the strategy for those work. Um, don't worry about Chat Noir. <laughs> Um, I am currently building a chat noir deck. Um, once I have that up and running, I will um, do a deck profile on that. Anyway, so um, what does Kledge exactly do? So it has two skills. So act on the Vanguard Circle once per turn. You can turn a card from your on face up. Choose all of your front row regards. They get plus 10k as early in the turn. And at the end of the turn, retire those units. And then auto on the Vanguard Circle. When the student attacks, you can counter blast one. Choose one of your regards with 3000 or greater power. Stand it, and it gets auto, regard circle. When the student attacks, until the end of the battle, when your opponent will call cards from Handy Guardian Circle, they must call three or more at the same time until the end of the turn. So now that we know Galadrius's full skill, we will go over. Um, its effectiveness in the four decks. So we first start off with Big Belly. So Big Belly is the best contender to run Caladrius in. Uh, the reason being is because of Big Belly's first skill to start off with. So its first skill is when your regard is tied by cards of Italy, during each battle phase or each end phase, you may draw a card. So since Caladrius gives tank to the front row, uh, regards, and then at the end of the turn, the regards die. Big Belly is the trigger of those regards dying, and you draw a card. So that means you can use Caladrius' skill without having to worry that you're going to neg your hand, as Big Belly essentially refunds the cost for calling those regards. Now, Big Belly is able to also uh, run Restanders, as it does have the space for it, and it also runs Talented Runners. So, what Talented Runners does is that it is a grade 3 normal unit with its accessibility and when it becomes successful it gets plus 4k power and the ability of when it attacks your opponent cannot call a grade zeros from their hand to a guardian circle. Now the reason why that is good in combination with Caladrius is that since um, Caladrius gives the unit the skill that they have to guard with 3 cards at once from hand and that Rhinos doesn't allow you to call great throws, it means the opponent is forced to get rid of combo pieces from the hand, which means that depending on how much damage they're on, they could potentially um, use the of the hand, which means their next turn could become quite lackluster. Um, another great thing about this as well is usually before uh, the Rhinos um, did uh, still have some good effectiveness with Managama Aurum. You just try to make the um, runners as big as you could, and then you'd use stuff like the Big Belly success unit on the Riga Circle and Crown Tiger to resand the runners and um, try and kill that way. Now, that was sometimes quite effective. And that sometimes might have all you needed to kill these opponents throughout the bat. But now that Caladrius is introduced in the Big Belly strategy, um, 
the runners becomes much more threatening. So Caladrius, um 100% is a 5 out of 5 in the big belly deck. Next we'll look over Isabel. So um, Isabel is a deck that has um, that can use forms of disruption during the opponent's turn. So you could kind of say that Isabel is somewhat wouldn't say exactly a control deck. Um, I wouldn't say exactly control deck, but it has ways of disrupting the opponent's plays. Now Isabel, um, unfortunately, like Big Belly, doesn't uh, allow you to plus um, plus cards in your hand when you're ready to start by Caladrius. But again, um, if you can start up cards, villains when they die then um, you can kind of lessen the burden so using cards like Mike Sabiru or just any other unit that um, has abilities when the unit dies so um, it is still very good in Isabel uh, using Caladrius as Isabel is also able to run cards like Crown Tiger and the uh, Big Belly Bodyguard and then also is, uh, has access to the Rhino as it is possible to fit that in as well. So the again the best time to use Caladrius usually in Isabel is uh, would be if you have a couple of restanders and then a Rhinos. If you don't have the runners and stuff set up, sometimes it might be better just to go into Minagama Aurum. Uh, so what Minagama Aurum exactly does is that it has the skill of the counter last one. You perform um, the, a mill effect four times, so you mill a four, four cards top of your deck. And then depending on what you mill, it gains an effect. So if you uh, mill a normal unit, you give the unit 10k power. And then if you reveal a trigger unit, you give you the guard plus one drive. So the reason why uh, that you might use Menagama Aurum as opposed to Clatrius sometimes in Isabel is that sometimes you might not want to have your regards retired as you might not have the uh, best regards at the moment. Or you want to keep your restander regards uh, alive um, at the time just to uh, put pressure on for multiple terms. Because, unlike with Big Belly, because you draw so many cards, um, you have a very high chance of uh, redrawing your restanders. Now, although Isabel doesn't. Um, like uh, Big Belly in regards to just war draw power, it does have um, interactions during the opponent's turn. So how it works is that it runs a grade 3 by the name of Mary, Mary Martin, and its skill is when it's placed on a regular so you can get on bust 1 and so bust 1, and then when it's placed, um, you perform, you mill the uh, top card of your deck, and then you perform the recording effect. So if you mill a normal unit, the opponent can't intercept, and then if you reveal a trigger unit, you get to retire the opponent's column. Now in Isabel, Isabel has the ability of an um, a effect is activated, uh, for like a mill effect, you get both effects. So that means when you place Mary Martin on the regular circle, you'll gain both the effects. The reason why this is really good is that if you combine it with a G guard called Our Mirage, Our Mirage allows you to, um, when placing the garden circle, to call Mary Martin from your hand to Riga circle, and then Mary Martin essentially denial Griffin's uh, defense Riga. So that's quite a uh, strong play to have. You can sometimes disrupt the opponent's plays or uh, 
minimize the amount of tax to keep you alive. As again, since it doesn't have full draw power, it has interruptions. Um, with the new G Guard that was released as well, it works very well with Isabel as well. As the new G Guard's effect is when it's placed on the Guardian Circle, you can count a lost one, be the top card of your deck, and then it gains um, the effect according to what the card is milled. But again, you get both the effects on Isabel, so normally that it gets plus 20k shield until the end of the turn. And if you build a tree unit, then it acts as a perfect guard. So that means that Isabel has access to potentially eight perfect guards in the deck now. So that's quite strong. So again, um, overall, I'd give uh, Calendrius and Isabel four out of five, only for the fact that if you're able to get your restanders and you're able to get your Rhinos, you can still potentially kill the opponent straight off the bat, uh, depending on how well you have your drive checks and depending on how many times you can restand your Rhino. Next, we'll go into Leopold Aggro. So, how Leopold Aggro works is that it focuses on um, kind of be aggro in the early game as well as grade 3, but then also milling um, a lot of cards from your deck. As you want to try and get to the other triggers which you can, and use cards like Tank Mouse, that if you mill the um, over trigger, you can add it to your hand by paying the cost for Tank Mouse. There's another rigger that does it as well, um, I can't remember, I think it's a promo, but the idea is you get your deck to a very low deck count, and then what you do is you stack the over trigger on the bottom of your deck so that um, if you do it right, you can reveal the over trigger for that turn. Which, and then sometimes you can actually um, do that on your first strike turn. It just depends on how much you're able to mill that turn. Because you use cards such as Hendrina, you use cards like um, Lady Demolish, just a lot of cards allow you to mill just to quickly get to the over trigger so that you can stack it. So how exactly you stack it is that you use a card called Tip Column. Um, it's a strike that has the ability that when a regard is retired, uh, by any means, it gets put on the bottom of the deck instead of being put in the drop zone. And then its second skill is that when a regard attacks, you can soul blast one, flip a card from your G's on face up, and it gets plus 5k until the end of the battle. And then at the end of the battle, it gets retired. And again, because retiring is on the bottom of the deck. So another thing you can do with uh, Leopold as well is that it allows you to turbo into a GP8 or your plural. Since um, you're able to do quite a few multi attacks, um, you can have Bloral making um, very big numbers on your second stride. Um, or you could also do the GB8, which the GB8 skill is um, you discard two cards. From, you discard two cards from your hand, and then you give five units plus 10k power. And then if you have one less cards in your hand, it gets plus 40k power and plus one crit. So if you have quite a few cards in your hand, you can actually use the act ability multiple times. So you can make you really, um, you can make your regards really big. So pretty much the idea is that yeah, you can go aggro very straight on, uh, very very quickly um, with Leopold. And then once you get to your strides, you kind of try and turbo into GB8 or try and turbo to a really strong Bloral or um, yeah, just. Um, focus on getting that over trigger to um, trigger it by stacking it. Now, where does Caladrius fit in the strategy? So, um, Caladrius still isn't a bad card in Leopold, um, but it isn't exactly the best in the, the strategy that you're trying to go for in Leopold, as um, Leopold does potentially uh, make some free regards, depending what you mill, and you can give them power, but um, it's, it's, its effectiveness isn't too well, and 
um, with the cards that you run, you can't sometimes exactly get a regard to that 30k threshold. Uh, it just depends on what your build is, but usually um, hitting a 30k threshold can potentially be quite hard. So uh, it, it probably has some niche somewhat. Maybe um, you guys let me know in the comments if you get Caladrius working in Leopold aggro. Um, I'd probably have to give Caladrius probably around a. Uh, I'd probably have to say a one, unfortunately. Um, again, there's again just it, it has a strategy. Like you have the strategy in Leopold, and unfortunately. Because uh, of the way that works, you're milling so many cards, you're trying to tow in GBA and trying to tow in Laurel, that the Caladrius isn't exactly um, effective. And then lastly, we have Hamske. So, uh, Hamske essentially is, you could say, like an excellent spam deck. So, the idea is you, if as long as you have Pencil Knight, Hamske, and Pencil High Hamske in your soul, you can just card two cards from your hand. Um, as long as you can keep writing Hamske Return, um, you can generate quite a few Axel markers. So the good thing about that is that um, if you've rode the Hamske twice, you have four markers right off the bat. If you keep writing more, you have more markers. So Caladrius definitely isn't too bad in the strategy as well, um, since since the Caladrius does give you no 10k, on your first turn when using Hamske, when you're trying to Caladrius, you can get the front row 10k, which means that your Hamskes can hit over a trigger. Uh, so that also works with force, no, actual numbers, sorry, because uh, usually the Pencil Knight Hamske and the Pencil Square Hamske usually hit for 20 12. Uh, okay, so they do very good against um, actual decks. Um, reeling a front as well um, definitely does make an imprint in deck too. As again, um, hitting a front on top of having a effect is very strong too. And you can actually um, get a regard to 30k in this deck as uh, Hanske does tap. Uh, Tend to typically run a couple handons, I believe it's handon. Uh, so, handon skill is that when a regard is placed on an additional regard circle, you can count on one and put a card from your hand to the soul, and then both the card on the additional regard circle and the handon get plus 10k. And then, if you have two actual markers, which you typically would in the handskay uh, deck, you can draw a card. So, you can potentially get off multi attacks as well, which is nice. Um, as well as again, um, being able to hit over defensive if uh, you're versing an axle deck and they do hit a defensive trigger. So, um, all in all, Caladrius definitely does um, do something in this deck. Um, Menagama Aura sometimes can be a better choice. It kind of, I think, uh, it kind of comes down to um, what your hand is like, and then um, also if you have um, put the opponent on a decent amount of damage. Sometimes the just can work quite well. So, for example, if you've somehow managed to push the opponent to four damage or something like that, or even like even three could be okay, but mainly like four, Caladrius definitely um, definitely can do quite well. Again, hitting a trunk it can be uh, hitting a front can be quite devastating. Um, so, because of that, I want to say that um, Caladrius and Hamske, I would put it. At around a th three, um, I'd I, I could see myself running potentially two copies of Caladrius in the deck, just like Isabel and um, Big Belly, as it 
definitely has its niches and it, um, you, you, you definitely use Kledger more in Hansky than you would in the Leopold. So that's the four decks uh, currently in premium um, that um, have the ability to use Caladrius. Um Overall, I think Caladrius would, I'd say it would be at least a free overall. So it's definitely not bad at all. If we take away the Hamske and the Leopold from the scenario, it's definitely a 4 out of 5. So Caladrius, um, definitely, again, just want to emphasize, Caladrius is definitely a very, very strong card in Great Nature. Uh, just unfortunately, um, the decks don't, that don't run Rhinos and stuff like that um, can't sometimes use uh, Caladrius as effectively, or um, Caladrius can still be effective if you don't run um, Rhinos, as long as you can push the opponent on uh, a fairly good amount of damage in the early stage of the game. Um, but anyway, that is it for me. Um, if you wanted to add anything, or maybe there's something I missed with Caladrius for any of the decks, definitely leave a comment down below, and I will see you.